direct primaries are prone to massive rigging, says the People's Democratic Gov Party Governors Forum. And Ministers of Interior or Minister of Interior Ralph Aregbashala has criticized or been criticized for his call for the signing of death warrants. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The Governor's Forum of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has condemned the proposed direct primaries recommended by the National Assembly in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, saying that it is prone to massive rigging. Speaking on behalf of the governors in Bolchi on Monday, Chairman of the Forum, Aminu Tambo or Sakoto State, backing his claim, cited a situation where President Buhari scored 15 million votes in the 2018 APC direct primaries only to score 15 million votes from the entire country in the 2019 general elections. The forum lambasted the federal government for the use of uh, underhand tactics and arm twisting of some PDP governors and other stakeholders to join the APC. Uh, and they called it a political party that uh, is wrecked or has wrecked the Nigerian economy. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dira Odeyemi. He is the Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. And also joining us uh, is Adaji Usman, Publicity Secretary of the APC FCC chapter. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you this evening. So, Mr. Dura, um, I, I'm going to start by giving us a clear... Let, let, let's talk about what direct primaries are for the purpose of those who are watching us because some people would not understand what it is. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. Um, there are direct and indirect primaries, and I just want us to um, quickly just give a background to it. So in a direct primary election... Um, registered members of a political party uh, just vote for who they want to be the flag bearer of their party. Unlike indirect primaries where no delegates are involved, party members choose their representatives through polls like they would do in a general election. So um, this is the difference. I just wanted us to clear that difference. Now, in the direct primaries, which is being proposed in the um, Electoral Act Amendment um, Bill, um, I want to understand why the PDP seems to be, uh, you know, against it. Uh, isn't this an opportunity for everyone's voice to be heard, especially when you have Democratic in the middle of the two Ps? There are two issues involved in this. And the first is the fact that political, political parties should be independent, and they should have a method of choosing whoever is going to flag their, to put on their flag. So no law should compel any political party about how they are going to choose their candidates. In whatever way and in whatever form, where whichever political party chooses a wrong candidate, then they are, bound, they are bound to lose at the general election. So I don't think it's the business of uh, the House of Rep or the lawmaker to choose for us how we are going to select whoever is going to be our representative in any election. That is number one. And number two, just like uh, Governor Tambua rightly put it, if you say you are proposing a direct uh, primary, is open to fraud and is open to rigging. The example given was that during the direct primary of APC, the president was able to record uh, 150 million votes or there about whatever. And at the end of the day, during the election, that was the exact vote he claimed to have made him the president. So where is the difference? Are we now saying that it's only the membership of the political party that elected him into office? So this we don't understand. And based on the fact that we just agreed that political parties should have that independent power to choose our or who is going to represent them, I think it's more than enough. I want to take you back to something you just said. Um, you did say that uh, the members of the National Assembly do not have a right um, to tell political parties how to run their private business. 
But then let's look at the politics of it all. The members of the National Assembly are a makeup of the PDP and the APC. Maybe these people do not have a problem with it, but the governors do have a problem with it. So is it really about the fact that the parties want to be independent or is it that the maybe the governors have a different agenda as opposed to the members of the legislature? Yeah, you may be right if you say that. The way and manner the, also, the legislators are looking at it could be quite different from the way the governors are looking at it. But at the end of the day, they have represented our voice. I mean the governors. They have said what we wanted. And there is now left for the... And I, I want to put it to you that right now, we try to make a kind of... to clarify what really happened. It was a proposal mentioned by the Speaker of Rep, by Jabi Amila. It has not been put into anything. Maybe they are going to put it into voting or whatever. But as it is, it is a personal opinion of, the, of uh, Mr. Speaker. And we are not sure to what extent that is going to be, that is going to, you know, to, to have the support of other members. Hmm. Interesting. Um, why is um, indirect primaries very important to the PDP? Why... You obviously are a member, of, a ranking member of the po political party. Why is it very important to you, and how does this uh, help the democracy, the internal democracy in your party? We believe it is too cumbersome, and it gives room for rigging. Anybody can just come up with any figure and declare it, and declare the candidate. Unlike the delegate election, whereby you know the number of delegates. You were in Nigeria when PDP conducted its presidential primary in Portacos. It was the most transparent election internally done that was, you know, applauded everywhere. So that's the kind of politics or that's the kind of election we think we should follow in order to, to be able to choose our leaders, not a direct one whereby anybody can just sit down anywhere and come up with any figure from any world or from any local government. But, 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 but you make it seem as if, if you were to try these direct primaries that it would not be controlled. Are you trying to tell me that as a party you really cannot control um, the primaries that you would hold be within your party? Um, meaning that even when you go to the polls, you also cannot control... I mean, because what you're trying to tell me is that there is no form of internal democracy and you're afraid that if you throw an election open to all and allow everybody's voice uh, to be heard, then you, you're scared that, you know, someone might or will rig it. Where is the control um, in terms of the electioneering process in your, within your party? Because if we do not expect some form of um, proper internal democracy in your party, we, do not, we should not be able to trust you to hold any offices or run for any offices if you cannot get it right within your party? You are missing the issues together. The two proposals are the method to choose whoever is going to flag uh, the... Uh, whoever yes, no, no, but, but I, I, no, I understand, but I'm, I'm following you up. No, 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 I understand, but you said that it would be open to you cannot to us which one is better. Well, I'm asking you why you have chosen yes. or you have kicked against the direct primaries if you haven't tried it. Uh, but, and then you quickly told me that, you know, you don't want just anybody to sit somewhere and decide who wins. I mean, it's supposed to be a democracy. Everybody's voice will come together and whoever has the highest voice or the highest number of votes will be the flag bearer. Isn't it as simple as that? To so even select a delegate involves virtually all the members of the party. It's a process on its own. That is their level of involvement. That is stage one. The stage two is the, is the delegates to elect whoever they now want as the, as the candidates. So it's still a process that involves virtually all the members of the party. The two systems are good, but one has an advantage of having a better control than the other. And that is what I'm saying. It's not that anybody is afraid about that. Exactly. Direct. And I'm asking, you do a good why process. can't you control the other? Can you now, are you trying to force her to accept a system no, we no, know no, no, is no. good for I'm, our I'm, But you, it's like telling me that you can't drive. And I'm asking, why can't you drive? Are you afraid to drive or you just don't want to drive? This is it. It's a simple question. Why, is, why do we, you... We, we, 
Why do you as a person well, think we, that the other is too cumbersome? Why? Because by the time you involve all the party members in such an election, there is no way you can control if the number of voters they claim to have gotten is correct or not. Does it That's mean that you don't trust them? So it means but, that there is no trust within your party and its members. You're telling me that. For example, that, that I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Ward 7 of, of a certain local government area of your party. Hello, hello. And you're telling me that in that ward, you cannot trust the ward chairman of your party to say that these are the number of people who actually voted and these are the people who voted for Mr. A and Mr. B. You're saying that you can't control it because they might one way or the other, tamper with the numbers. So you do not trust the members of your own political party. That's it. Got nothing to do with trust or nothing. But we believe this is the best system that is so transparent and for okay. everybody to know. That is it. Can I, can I be given the opportunity to speak on this? Yeah, we will get to you, Mr. Daji, please. Just hold on. We'll get please. to you. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Duran. So we, so we as a political party, if we decide to use uh, indirect method, I think that is the, as a political party, we have the right to say, yes, this is the best system. I just mentioned where we have used it and we got applause from Nigerians. And that is the last presidential election where uh, Abubakar Atiku emerged as our candidate. We believe that's the best method. So, and uh, we, we cannot be queried about it. Okay. What matters is to have a candidate that will be presentable to Nigerians. Okay. And that is why up to now, you cannot fought the primary of a PDP anywhere because we have not lost governorship through 40 primaries. Hmm. Interesting. To you, Mr. Uh, Adaji, I, I, I want to understand why, yeah. why does the APC, that is if the APC is open to this proposition by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, um, is this something that the APC is open to, Mr. Adaji, uh, direct primaries? Well, um, the, 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 in, the, in, the, in the APC party's constitution, the party is open to three methods of conducting its primaries. One, direct primaries. Two, indirect. And three, consensus. Where consensus is most acceptable, where you can sit down as a party and decide on a candidate acceptable by the people, it goes. Where that does not work, it beholds on the party to decide on either the direct or indirect primaries. In the case of Mr. President, we have tried the three methods. We have used direct primaries, we have used indirect primaries. It, you will recall that in 2016, 2015 rather, where we had our, our primaries in Lagos, we employed the indirect primaries that brought about the president, President Mamadou Buhari, as the candidate of the party where he contested among other four contestants. And now that election was very transparent. When my colleague did say that um, PDP had the most consensus, I mean, a transparent primary in Portacourt, I laugh. I laugh because that primary, that primary election that was conducted in Portacourt cannot in any way be compared to what we had in 2015 in Lagos. Well, well where, you, where, you at the PDP's, where are you at the PDP's primary? How do you know or how can you tell? You're not a party man. How can you tell that their no, primary no, no, is not, not anything record. compared to they, yours? They, they, you cannot speak for him, can you? Okay. If you were not bank, there. Bank, bank, bank. My we, name is Marianne. We, we are, we are to, My name is Marianne. We are, we are you, make, you cannot we are speak for the a, PDP if you were not part of their primaries, can you? Exactly. Banker, as we speak now. My name is Marianne. Now, what 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 happened in in PDP in the primaries in Port Harcourt is there for everybody to see. What happened in the primaries of the APC in Lagos is there for everybody to see. They are there in the archive. So these are not secret issues. Well, let me leave that for now. But what I'm trying to make you understand is that in 2015, we employed the indirect primaries. We tested it and it worked for us. In 2019, the president said we need to go by direct primaries. We need to try all the options. The direct primaries gives room to every member of the party to participate in the, in the election of who governs them. Every card carrying member of the party is allowed to participate, to vote, cast their votes and say, look, this is our choice. Where somebody says they cannot be controlled, that is not correct. Every card carry member of the party is known. If your party had a total registration of 2,000, 
it is expected that at that primaries, having done the direct primaries, 2,000 votes are expected. When you have 2,001, it means that something is wrong with that primaries. So for anybody to say it cannot be controlled, if we can control general election, uh, conducted by INEC, where we have over 15, 20, 30 uh, million Nigerians casting their votes, if that can be controlled, I wonder why a little less than 2 million, 3 million members cannot be controlled in a party where you employ direct primary. So for us in APC, we are very comfortable with all the three methods of conducting primaries. The which, consensus, which, the direct, which has, which and has the, the APC been using more often? Because right now there's so much split in the APC. We are, um, we are, we're having we are having challenges within uh, the APC in Ekiti. There's there's been a, an ongoing tussle uh, within the APC in uh, Kwara. Uh, so really, which mm. one has the APC used most importantly, uh, especially when we we're talking about direct primaries? We have conveniently used both the direct and the indirect primaries in states. I can give you, I can give you for free that the last election, primary election that were conducted in FCT were all conducted through the direct primaries. That is in 2019. All the House of Reps, Senate elections, local government elections were done by direct primaries. I can also tell you that in 2016, we used the indirect primaries. I can also tell you for free that most of our elections across so many states were done by direct primaries. It all depends on what the state feels that is most convenient, most comfortable, most acceptable by the members of the party. Because the primary election is about them. It is not about an individual, but it's about the voters. So what is most acceptable and comfortable and convenient for the members of the party at that particular state is employed so long as it is within the ambit of the constitution, the party's constitution. If the House of Representatives decides that this will become part of the amended, uh, the, the Electoral um, Act that is being passed as, uh, about to be passed as a bill, um, will the yes. APC be comfortable with this particular one being Wonderful. the modus operandi Wonderful. going forward? Yeah. Are we, you sure? We, we are already used to it. Really? Because are, I asked a question that you glossed over. The, the APC seems to be having cracks within the party right now. And I pointed to Quara State. I, I've spoken I about Quara APC class. over and over that there's an ongoing squabble within the party. The most recent mm. is in Ekiti State. So I'm trying to understand mm. what type of internal democracy does the APC have in terms of states? Now, now let me, let me say this clearly. Any political party that is ruling, any ruling political party is prone to having more members moving into the party. And politics is all about interest. Where you have two, three, four, five persons come together to vie for a particular position, interests are bound. And where you have interest, there are rooms for what you call cracks. I don't look at it as cracks. I look at it as normal political party struggles. Where you decide to play the game by the rules, to decide to do whatever you can within the ambit of the law to win elections. So what is happening in Ekiti, or is happening in um, Quara, like you have said, as far as I'm concerned, is not a crack, but it is a sure way of people testing their potentials with regards to the voters, casting their votes and then deciding who governs them thereafter. So it is not a crack. It is normal. It's a certain I would have agreed with democracy. you. Mr. Daji, I would have agreed with you because, uh, if, I mean, if I, were, if I were just to go by what you just told me, but I have had members of the opposing sides from especially uh, Quara State on this show and the most reoccurring thing is that there was no room for democracy. Someone was foisted overnight by the opposing party on the whole party. And this is the issue. Can you, can you, do you also understand, okay? I did tell you what, that there are three methods of selecting, hold on, hold on, that there are three methods of electing um, the, who represents the people in our party constitution. I did tell you about consensus. I did tell you about direct. I did tell you about indirect where the leaders meet and decide, look, when you say somebody says so, if we are 30 and 27 agrees that consensusly this is the man that we want to govern us, three is in the minority. So you won't say that what has been done there is illegal. It is within the party's constitution. It is within the legal framework of the party that consensus can be used where it can. Where it cannot, then you employ the other two methods, which is either direct or indirect. So what is happening in Quara, like I have said, may have been bought out of the fact that 
leaders of the party across board may have settled for consensus. But perhaps, maybe some very minute number of persons who did not have their way may possibly want to take to the media to say, look, what has been done. There and is no and so the minute of number of people are the ones that are holding the party to ransom right now. Is that what you're telling me? That the party well, is well, facing well, what well, they're facing now forget. because of a handful don't, of don't people? Forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. In politics, where you have, there are times you could have multitude of persons who, of course, have their say genuinely, and very few persons who could decide to take to violence may hold the place to ransom. That does not mean that that is in the majority. People taking people to ransom may have done that through violence. And it's not everybody in the party that will want to go by violence. So majority of the people may have done what is right, but a few persons who may not have gotten it right may want to use violence. So holding them hostage or holding the people to ransom does not imply that the majority of the people are on that side. I want you to understand that. Great. Let me go back to you, uh, Mr. Dero. Uh, there are many grievances that the PDP... Governor's Forum hold against the APC. I'd like to make mention of one. Recently, the, the Governor's Forum, um, even before this meeting, uh, had come out to say that, the PDP Governor's Forum had come out to say that uh, the federal government is uh, engaging in some form of arm twisting and threatening um, most of their governors to join the APC. Um, I, I, and I'm really uh, I'm curious as to why this is happening if it is really happening of course i know that you have lost two governors if not three so far to the apc um why why do you think the governors have taken this position uh saying that the government is hand twisting them uh to one way or the other play to you know the rhythm of the apc the arm twisting is very simple because apc is, is in power because they are in government, they have a way of coercing whoever they want into their party. And part of it, or one special part of it, is the EFCC. And the argument we are saying is that if you believe some governors are corrupt, why is it that you lure them to join you with the threat of EFCC? You see them as a devil in PDP. But the moment they cross to your, to your party, they become a saint, and you no longer talk about EFCC. There are many governors that have been contacted. It's not only the three of them that went. The other governors have been contacted, and they are only trying to safeguard the situation in the country. They, they, are not, they, they don't want to mention it, actually. And that's why they use that word, I'm twisting. I'm twisting could be a way, could be anything to lure you or to coerce you into the other side. And what we are saying as a political party is that if you are really fighting corruption, do you now use that as an excuse to coerce them into your party? If you are looking for thieves and the thieves easily walk into your net, the next thing is just to arrest them and you know, charge him to court, irrespective of whatever is happening. But as it is now, they are coercing their arm twisting. And what we are saying as a political party is that our motto is power belongs to the people. No individual is bigger than PDP. There has been instances when people left the party, the party remained. And there has been instances when they came back to the party, the party remained. So PDP will remain PDP. That means because some people left does not mean that there will not be PDP again. They are here to do their Congress. And I can assure you, by the time they finish their Congress, you never can say how many governors are going to cross to PDP. Upon everything, I'm not saying this is good for our democracy. It is a bad system whereby people just wake up as APC today and tomorrow they are PDP. But if the tables were turned, and, and, you know, I've asked you this question before, what's the difference between the PDP and the APC? I mean, because when these people decide to cross over from the APC to the PDP, the doors are wide open for them to come right in. And the same thing is happening in the APC and you're pointing fingers. What's the difference? The lines are blurred, if you just, ask me. I, I, I have just said it. Neither PDP or APC is... Uh, is benefiting from this. It's affecting our democracy. It's affecting the growth of our democracy. So why, so why is the PDP not this, setting a only... trend? If you think that this is a problem to our democracy, as you have said, what are you doing about it to stop the trend of cross capiting and crisscrossing? What we are proposing is an electoral law that we buy you from uh, crossing to a political party with whatever office you may hold. 
once you had that clause, it will be very difficult for office holders to cross to another political party. And not until that is done, we will continue to see this cross carpeting affecting our democracy. So for the mere fact that it is affecting PDP, that I'm condemning, does not mean that I'm applauding it if they come to PDP. Mm. Generally, it is a bad system that is affecting our democracy. But if they come, will you take them? Policy is a game of number. <laughs> and no political party ever shot his door against anybody. Uh -huh. Political party is always open. People can go in, people can come out. But okay. there must be principle. All right. Well, quickly, Mr. Daji, in closing, um, the PDP governors have made many claims. In fact, they have said that the APC is a party that has wrecked Nigeria's economy, the economy that the president promised to build when he came into power, the um, issue of unemployment that he promised to deal with. They also lambasted the APC and the presidency in terms of the insecurity uh, that has been bedeviling the country. Uh, they've talked about the fact that Nigerians have only witnessed nothing but misery and bad governance. What do you have to say about this? Well, I, what I can say to you is for you to go back, into his, to, go back to history. Once upon a time, I, li I don't like talking about this because um, six years down the line, I don't like to re recall where we were before this particular government took over administration from the PDP. But it will interest you to know that the, the, the government was almost... What in fact has sunk completely, was sinking completely at the time the APC came into power. And Okojo Iwela, the then of Senussi, Lamido Senussi, who was, of course, the governor of CBN, Okojo Iwela, who was the minister of finance and host of others, and even Solodo, they had all to say about where we were. I'm sure Nigerians remember where we were in 2015 before we voted well, in President the, Buhari. The, the, the yes, those were the problems well, of the, Nigeria, the, and that's the, why Nigerians the, voted the president the, in. What I, has I, the I president done this. and the APC well, government to change well, that situation well, today? Well, that's my well, question. Well, my well, name well, is well, Mary Ann. I'll tell you for the last time. My name is Mary Ann. Please remember that. If you allow me, if you allow me, my analysis will take me to where you want me to go. Now the we point here is very day. clear. We were, we were, we were, we were. The economy was so bad, was in shambo when we came in. But as we speak today, you could remember that salaries were not paid. We were in recession when we took over. But today, we have taken the APC have taken Nigeria out of recession. As we speak today, salaries have been paid as at when due. Monies from the federal allocation have been sent to the various states. The issue of insecurity has been an issue that has been there. In the last 10, 15, 20 years, and this government has been doing everything possible to ensure that the issue of insecurity... Did your is government not promise that but they I were going to put an end in, to insecurity I as soon as they got into know. office, yes or no? Did the government promise that they were going to make all of our problems a thing they, of the they, past? They, 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 this present government, they are did, not magicians. Did they, they promise... Are not magicians I'm sorry, sir. Promise. Did they so, promise that they were going to put an end <laughs> to our problems? Yes, and that is the exactly Okay. That is exactly what and has been. the and government been able to do it. that? Well, it's almost six years down the line. Has the APC-led government been able okay. to scratch Bank the surface Bank. of that? Okay. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, your, your connection is breaking. Uh, Usman Adaji is the uh, All Progressive Congress uh, Party chairman for the FCT. And of course... Um, Dira Odeyemi is the deputy spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you very much for speaking with us, uh, gentlemen. Thank we have you to very go much. Now. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. Well, we have to go. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk about um, the um, situation by Raoul Ragbe Shalah. He's calling for governors to sign the execution warrant of over 3,000 prison inmates. Why? To decongest the prisons. We'll be right back.